Hello, oh, everybody. And I, I want to welcome all of you uh, coming to this event tonight. Uh, it's great seeing some familiar faces, people we've served over the year. It's great seeing some new faces. Uh, it's great seeing people from the staff, team members of both practices. So I'm really excited about it. Uh, I think we're all going to learn a lot tonight. Uh, just a little bit about our connection. Uh, when I went to dental school, and we won't even go into how long ago that was, <laughs> but it was a while back. I used to go out of my way not to make eye contact with the dean at school, because if you did, only bad things happened. But back in 2000, I actually got a chance to become friends with the dean of the school at USC at that time. And the guy happened to be the world's leading researcher in craniofacial and oral development, the genetics of it. And he headed up a federal agency. And he actually wrote the Surgeon General's report on oral health in 2000. And one of the things I took from what he had to say was that dentistry need to know more about medicine, and medicine need to know more about dentistry. But I think we could improve upon it, and I think he would to this day, because we both need to know more about alternative care medicine. And alternative care medicine, vice versa. We really need to, to blend because I think that's when we achieve the kind of results that we want to family and friends. What we've always looked at in practice, and Dr. Seth will verify this, when I do my spiel, it's always like our practice is all about providing progressive care and making dentistry fun. And we look at the people we serve and the people with whom we work as friends and family. And that's why it's such a natural to really admire Seth, Dr. Seth, and the things he does and the way he does it. Uh, Seth just has, Dr. Seth has such a, a passion for what he did. He's got more energy than all of us put together. He got tirelessly trained, educates himself, really dedicated to learning. And what's even better than that is he's just as passionate about sharing all the information and making a difference for other people. And so, I mean, I'm touched just to have the honor to introduce him. So here he is. Pillar of the community, <laughs> all around great guy. On top of that, he can really sing. <laughs> it's my honor to introduce Dr. Seth. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thank you. First of all, I want to just thank Dr. Jack for letting this, making this possible. He's really. Uh, I, I sent out a little e-blast to my, my patients, and I just said, a world-class dentist. And most people think, oh, you're just piping that up. He really is. He really is, because I, he'll tell you, we have to do continuing education every year. And you have to have a certain amount. And ours in chiropractic is pretty low. And, but I never worry about it, because I overdo it. It used to be, I think, 15 hours, and now it's 25 I've never known that answer because I've always done over, on an average, 75 to 100 hours. And, I, and my, my highest one was 178 hours. And you don't get to roll those over. It's like you start right over the, on your birthday, you start none. <laughs> it's like your, your bank account is done. And I found out Dr. Jack does the exact same thing. I was like, whoa, I've never met anyone like that. So that that Dr. Jack, he is world class, and he is absolutely amazing, and he kind of plays it down. Let me tell you a little bit about history about myself. I, I come from a family of all medicine. My father is a pediatrician. He, he was a pedi he's retired now. He was a pediatrician for 36 years. My, my mother was an uh, oil surgeon, and excuse me, my, my grandmother, I'm, I'm mixing this up. My mother was the head nurse of USC County, uh, medical uh, surgery ward and fraternity ward, and so in the 50s up until until 1971, and so I and then my grandmother rest her soul was an oral surgeon nurse for 46 years. I was pre med. I was supposed to go into medicine, and uh, while I was doing that, my I'm I'm a biology major. I'm going to school, getting ready to go, and my father says it's not what you think it is. There's, there's more to that, and you, medicine is not what you think it is. You've kind of been brainwashed into that. Try some other things. I took other things. I took cooking courses. I took <laughs> art, <laughs> expressing myself. And, but I took a dance class. Had never danced in my life. And what happened was 
I said, um, but I had played basketball. I played basketball with Michael Cooper, but he was older than me, but we played together and then we went to, United, we went to Europe to represent the United States in the World Championship. So I wanted to secretly play basketball. And um, to get, hurry off and get off the story, so I said, well, I'm going to take a dance class because if I'm going to cover Magic Johnson, I got to get a little bit quicker <laughs> on my feet. And so, and, and really, I really, that was my dream. And so I, my first dance class, and she's happy. I can slam dunk, I can jump, and there's not a lot of guys dancing. And there's a person dancing, and it's a lady. And I said, and I'm 19, and I said, this person's going to be running towards me and jumping on me every day instead of me chasing them around the whole. I was like, whoo! <laughs> this is, this is, and that's how I got into dance. That's literally how my, my best friend over there, the same thing, how he got into salsa. And he, we're present with an international champion Latin dancer in the old Cordova. And so that's how we got into dance. Two years later, Adelphi University gives me a scholarship. I get a dance degree. It's, it's really helpful in society to have a dance degree, by the way. That's what you, <laughs> for, for, forget this app, computer stuff, go and, do, go and dance <laughs> for, for, for four years. And, so, and then Joffrey Ballet gave me a scholarship and then Alvin Ailey. But I had already started late in, in the dance the dancer's career is about, about 33, you're, you're kind of done. Baryshnikov was already talking about, for those who know, was talking about already retiring. I was already 25 and I could never do that. So um, I got back and I got hurt. I was lifting someone and it, was, it didn't hurt. It was just, wow, that felt weird. And my, I called my dad, I'm in New York, and I said, Dad, and he says, don't go and take the medicine. They're gonna mask your pain and then you're gonna injure yourself more. That is not the way to do it. Going back, someone's ultrasounding me and they said, why don't uh, they go, you know what, you've done everything and you're in great shape. Why don't you go and see a chiropractor? I had never heard that word. I didn't know what that meant. I, I literally had not, you know, you're like, you're, tw you're 19, tw 22, and you've never, never heard the word. But it was the perfect fit for me because it put dance and health together. And to this day, I've never worked a day in my life that my vocation is my vacation. This is, this is what I do, and this is my calling, so I'm supposed to do this. this is, I, uh, Lily was telling me something, and I said, if you keep on talking to me, I'm going to cry. And <laughs> I said, because I'm, this is my calling, it's to keep you healthy. So with that, we're going to talk about it. So we're, I said we were going to talk about your teeth, your posture, and your feet. So it's really from your, um, from your foot to your mouth. And sometimes I put my foot in my mouth, and so my wife is here, and so to make sure of that, because she says, not only did you put your foot in your mouth, I think you stepped in something and then put it in your mouth. So, so I'm going to try not to do that. I'm going to try not to do that. So the first thing is your teeth. Your teeth are, are they are so precious to you. And so what happens to it is that every tooth is connected to a nerve that's connected to an organ. So if you're not taking good care of your teeth, you need to take care of that because everything you generate in your body, every, the heart will regenerate itself, the liver, four to seven years, your body is a new body. You're looking at a new person, except for your teeth. They do not regenerate. So after your, when your adults come in. So you need to take very good care of your teeth because that's, what's, that's part of your health. You, how many of you have heard on the commercials about gingivitis will give you, can give you lead to heart disease by show of hands? Okay, so I'm so glad because when I used to first say this, I thought people were gonna knock my teeth out and say, oh, you're talking bull. And so, but it is, it is literally, your teeth are so important. That is Dr. Jack's job, is to take care of it. Because there's another thing about that. If you, um, the, on, in regards to your teeth, they're connected to the nerve and then connected to an organ. The healthy, a vibrant, healthy 80-year-old on, you'll see one thing in common. You'll see a common thread in it. They will have either their full set of real teeth or they'll have all false teeth. And so someone has said that to me, and, but he wasn't a dentist, he was a doctor. And I said, hmm, so. I'm getting work done, and I'm like, oh, cocker, <laughs> and, so, and, I, and I, I brought up that statement. I said, is that true? And he stopped, he looked at me, and says, you know what? The four patients that I'm thinking of right now that's over 80, that statement is true. 
And he said, I said, wow. So I started acting, asking other dentists. And if so far, no one has contradicted it. So I can't say here is the, the clinical paper on it. But the reason being is if you have a pulse, it's stimulating something that was supposed to be dead. Now it's stimulating the nerve, now it's stimulating the organ, and that organ is getting a false feedback. And so now you're, you're constantly stimulating, stimulating, stimulating. So the first thing is take care of it so it doesn't get there. If it, if it gets there, then Dr. Jack and I will do our best. But you're really trying. And some people say, oh, but that tooth is taken out. The nerve is not taken out. The organ's not taken out. That, that nerve is very important. So brush, floss, everything. Get your, get your checkups. Do whatever he says because that is so important. Um, we have a machine that does a kind of like a it's it's kind of like a biofeedback. There's it's more complicated than that, but it does an electrical impulse to you and then you respond to it. So it's almost like a lie detector, but I don't like to say that in my office. It went lying to you. It's a it's a truth detector. I literally call it a truth detector. And every time, and it will tell me what's going on and what is irritating your teeth. What uh, what happened is go and Dr. Jack will, but every time people say, oh, that's where I have my, my um, root canal. Oh, that one. The, one of the worst of the worst was my other best friend, size Ennio, and he is my worst patient. My best friend is my worst patient. <laughs> and so my other best friend is my best patient, but he's my worst patient. So he came and the show, and it was red, and I'd never, I'd never seen this. And so he's looking at me, and I'm telling him this, and he's just like this. So he leaves, and he goes, and he doesn't tell me this. He goes to his dentist. The next day, he goes to his dentist. And so his dentist goes like this, looks in his mouth and everything, and he goes, look at this paper, and it showed this. And the guy goes, now chiropractors are doing dentistry too? Oh. <laughs> so, so he rolls his eyes. He goes, I don't see anything. And then he goes, but at the same time, you do need x-rays. You haven't been in it forever. Does the x-rays? Guess what two showed up? Those two. That it, had given, it had given an impulse, and it was there. So he comes back to my office, and I'm thinking, wow, because he, he only comes when he's crawling in. And he sat in my office, and he would go like this, hi. My name is Carlos, and this man is incredible. But yesterday, <laughs> yesterday you could have called me Doubting Thomas because and, and you should have seen more people came in for teeth <laughs> on that time. So, so uh, like I said, I haven't had the honor to show that to, to Dr. Jack yet, but we're going to work on that and, and take care of that because that is one of the foundations of your health is good oral cavity. Take care of your mouth, which leads me on to, we, we already talked about the machine, what, what brought me there. The, that machine also tells me a little bit also what's going on. And I want everyone to go like this, make this triangle. We can wait, even if you have a, uh, <laughs> yeah. So this triangle represents you. The structure, which is your body, the chemical, which is your biochemistry, and then the last one is your emotions. And that one is the one that's the key to a lot about your health. And so, bless you. And so that's what I work. My office is about fixing this triangle. Because if you're missing any one of those parts, you cannot heal 100%. Absolutely, it's not going to happen. Poor diet, not going to get there. Unhealthy body, you're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> unless, unless there's a gun in there, and you're like, oh, yeah, and that's why I'm keep on moving. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, right. And then, but it's the emotions. And the reason why the emotion is about that, that's what's running you. It's subconscious. And the reason how, like you said, well, how did you, how, how is this going? The reason why the subconscious runs you, it's because not, none of you can tell me why is your heart beating, why is your cells changing right now, why is your hair growing. Mine stopped on the subconscious <laughs> on that. It stopped. It went, <laughs> it went to sleep. And so on and so on. It's, you can't tell me why you hear me, and, why, and then it all works together. So that is so important, and you don't even know. You might be avoiding something, and it's all subconscious. So we do a lot of work on that. The psychologist does that also. 
Uh, we do it in a shorter form of that, and they'll do that, but then that's it. They might, if they're psychiatrists, give you the chemistry, but they're not going to work with the body. The same thing, a lot of my colleagues, I wish most of them, I wish more of them would do it, they'll work on the body part, but they're not going to do nutrition. A lot of them do, but, but n there's very few that does all three. And that, that is key to your health. You need to have that, that, um, uh, that connection of your spirit and your body. There's a saying, spirit without body is exp expressionless. So when that, that's a rock, it doesn't have a spirit. So that, but um, matter without spirit is is um, it's expressionless. So so if matter without a spirit is motionless. It doesn't move. You're so unique. You have both of those. You got to take care of that to be healthy for the rest of your life. That is so key to it. So my my talk was. Where did you want to sit down? You good? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so at, at the office we we take care of that and we address that also. So I said about posture. Your posture is, tells me everything. And and what happens is that now this is this is, you know, always like, this always happens. This always happens. <laughs> I have nothing to tell you. <laughs> so, so, there's always your posture is everything because it's tell me where you are, where you've been, and where you're going. Your posture, that's what that spirit is in. Your posture is key to your health. And one of the the worst thing that's happening right now is basically we, our society is going the opposite way. See, we were born like this, we grow like this, we age back like this. And then that's when you know that person's going down. They're, 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 going, they're going down. So you want to take care of your health and take care of that body because this is the only body you get. This is it. You don't get to change parts. Think of it, my, my dear friend Aaron, we went to a Ferrari show, and he, he's a pff, Formula One, Ferraris, talk to this guy. <laughs> so I'm into Formula One right now. <laughs> so, so anyway, we, we're going to this Ferrari show, and we saw, oh, you know, so what happened was we saw the, like the 2004, 2005 Ferrari. Ferraris. Um, Wayne was there too. Dr. Wayne was there too. And so they're hot. They're sexy. They're like, whew, and you're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And you're just looking at it. And he's drooling. And so, so we're, we're looking at it. And then, but where was everybody? Everyone was at the classics. We were all like, oh my gosh, they don't even make them like that. See, that's what you have to think of your body. You, and whatever year you were born, that's when your classics started. So if you, I'm not going to say what year, but, but 56, so a 56 Ferrari, it is gorgeous. It cannot compete with the 2014 Ferrari. It can't. It's not going it, to, that one's going to get there faster. It's going to be there faster. The, but the, the 56, 50, 56 Ferrari, it will get there. And it'll get there with style. It'll be like, yeah, I'm so, and that's what you want. That's what you want because there's only three choices in this game. There's really three choices. You're either um, a classic, a jalopy, or you're in the junkyard. Oh, I think that's called Forest Lawn. So, <laughs> so. Those are your only choices of that. So you have to take care of it. See, because your body doesn't make, when people say, well, I had just had uh, a titanium put in. I have plastic put in. I have the stainless steel. I have, they tell me all the stuff. You know what? I already know they're all jacked up. Because their body's going to always attack it. you got to knock down the immune system. You have to. If you're going to react to a splinter, what do you think it's going to do to stainless steel? It doesn't recognize it. What, and it's so sensitive to it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go, how sensitive? Blood is your life stream, basically. And I'm A negative um, in my blood type. Bless you. And if you're B positive, I can't give you blood. If I give you too much, you're dying. You're dying. That's how sensitive it is. Well, who makes stainless steel? 
let one of you say, oh, look at this. <laughs> Nobody makes that. So you're going to have to take that down. So take care of your gift, which is your natural health, because this is it. you got to come in as a classic. So I'm doing that. So one of, what are the things that is causing it now? Basically is um, uh, the computer. W one of them is the laptop. The laptop, does anyone know where the laptop, why it was designed? I mean, you can participate in this. <laughs> for the, the laptop was made for the airplanes. It was so when you put it on the tray, it was right there, and it was doing it. it was so and so convenient. It was very convenient. But then it became really convenient. You go, oh, I'll take it, and now I don't have to take my whole big frame computer or computer with me. I have my little laptop. The only thing is, you do this, you do that with your head. So that is such a stress on your body all the time because I'm going to use your purse, Sonia. <laughs> your head is the weight of a bowling ball. So if I'm leaning forward, I'm not blending with gravity anymore. So if I'm out here, and this is kind of, are you packing? <laughs> are you packing? <laughs> so, 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 so <laughs> wow. You, you, you don't know how strong I am right now. <laughs> You're going to say, is there electricity in there? <laughs> I really do want to shake. But what's happening is, it's because the weight is pulling me down. That's what your head is doing. There's nothing else holding up your head. There's nothing else holding up your head except for your body. So most of us, 98%, oh, I had a, well, a genius tell me this, 99.5% of you have interior head carriage. You hold your head like this. So... You're, you're already straining your body. One of the things that happened, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> One of the things that happens is this, it's C5. C5, there's, there's seven bones in your neck, it's called cervical, and there's seven of them. C5 is the one when you are able as a baby to hold up your head, that's the one that the, the baby is starting to mature and there a lot of things are gonna, it's a big development. Uh, stage for that kid. Well, C5 is also the first one when you get a whiplash, and by the time you're 13, you've already had a thousand traumas to your body, uh, the average American, playing football, falling, tri tripping, tumbling, whatever. But when you see an older person, they'll start going like that, C5, you're starting to see their health fail right in front of you. Their, hip, their, their neck goes like this and they can't hold up their head. So C5 is key to that. So, but the other one is, that we sit. That's now, you now heard that that's one of the leading causes for, of heart um, conditions. It's because we're sitting too much. The body is, has to work harder than that. So we're sitting and doing this. That doesn't sound like American to us. <laughs> that's what everyone's doing. And the other one is this, no movement. See, you were born to move. You have the same joints that you had since you were a baby, except for they developed. They got stronger, they got strong, but they're the same joints. And you could have a one of the you can have one of the finest Ferraris, and you let it sit for a year, it's not it's not turning over. What do you think the body's doing? So first we were walking, then we were running, then you, we had horses, but it was always movement. Your body always has stimulation and stuff because the brain needs stimulation to see what the body's doing in the body. Then it tells the body how to respond to that stimulation because he's not going to like me if I pinch him like this. He's not going to like me if I go like this, too. <laughs> so, 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 then that's it. Look, now his foot started to move. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> see? So, so, stimulation is what the body needs. But now we have become about convenience. So that glass on the, on the car and it doesn't move with water in it, that's not good. Your body doesn't tell you get up and move because you know every one of you when you were a kid would go like this and you're going on a long trip. When are we going to get there? When are we going to get there? You know why? Because they want to move. They, they, they want to move the body but as we get older and older we don't want to move. You're getting closer to death. So you need to move. So the first thing is when you're, ideally, you should move every 20 minutes. You should get up and move and get the circulation going on. Can't do it, you're driving to San Diego from right now. Get, move your car seat back and forth or do something like that. Get that moving 
But don't forget to change your rear mir oh. your mirror. Because, <laughs> and that's why we brought cards if you do. <laughs> if you do forget, <laughs> you can come and see us. So, but the whole thing is, move that body. Your body wants to move. So, case in point, that's what we're going to do today. One of the, there's, there's two things that I already know when the person's aging, and we're going to teach one just because of the time limit. And the first one is moving your neck. Um, when you get an infant, what, what is the first thing? If, if I was passing Dr. Wayne a baby, what would I give him first? The foot? Okay, the arm? <laughs> I would give him the head because it's so free moving. And so that's what you need to do. The first thing I see in older people, they start not doing this. One of the worst persons, one of the worst persons in my personal life is my mom. My mom does not use, she doesn't look over her shoulder anymore. She, she's like this, looking in that side view mirror, going 60 miles an hour, <laughs> going like this, and I'm like freaking out. So now I drive because we, we were just screaming. So, so the first one, is, and you could tell, is when you go, the side to side will be the first one, and the next one is the rotation, and also extension. Those are the ones, because when was the last time any of you went like this? Most of you won't do that. So we're going to all stand up. I'm going to need a chair. Dr. Lamb, I'm going to need a chair. Don't sit down. <laughs> yeah, don't sit down. So three times a day, three times a day. Thank you. <laughs> That's where I go, wow. <laughs> so three times a day in the morning, once in the, in, in the middle of the day to break up the... the stillness and also at the end and this is what you're going to do roll your shoulders back pinch them back do not just go like this you need to they, they need to engage so 10 rows and the reason being why not forward if you say well why not forward it's because you were born like this you need to balance out your muscles so do the 10 shoulder rolls okay and then in this in this order think of a diamond forehead ear chin. So what you're going to do is go forward and then you do its opposite. Go all the way back. And you should feel it engaged in your mid-back. Come back up. Always come back to neutral. So don't go here and then cheat to the next one. <laughs> go, go to the side. To the side. Stretch it. Come back to center. Look over your chin. Or your shoulder, excuse me. Look over your shoulder. Come back to center. And then do it all together. Now, <coughs> one way, and then go the other way. Okay, how many of you heard cracking and, and so, okay, uh, you're falling apart. <laughs> so what that is, that's CO2. CO2 is what ages you. You know how they ch ch check to see how old things, the carbon. That's CO2, and you don't have it in other joints because that joint is moving. You will hear it in your knees. If your knees are starting to get arthritis, that's the beginning that something's wrong. <coughs> so you need to get the CO2 and that to build up. If you get a banana and it's not ripe, what is the first, or an avocado, you put it in the bag because it's in its own CO2. You're in your own CO2 in here. So when you hear that, that's, that's telling you something. The other thing is this. If it hurts, don't keep on doing it. What I'm giving you, I want to, it's diagnostic and therapeutic. The therapeutic is you're moving it. But if I can go in here and I feel it hurt, you don't keep on saying, well, what if I just keep on doing it? <laughs> you don't do that. You're by saying, back off on that. But you know, say, hey, that's interesting. Okay. And the reason why we do it in that order, by the way, you did C1, the top one, C2, it's going back, C3, the same, C4, and then the C5, C, uh, C6, C7 are in the full rotation. So we're going to do it one more time because I said three times or two more times. Or five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That forward, go backwards, <laughs> do it backwards. And so, and so, and then forehead in its opposite. Ears, ear, turn, turn, and then full circle. Full circle. Okay, now I'm into things that are practical and that you will do it because most of my patients, I'll say this, and, and he, he won't do it at all and he'll do it for everyone in this room. And so, so, so 
this is how fast you can do it. And, this, and we try and keep up with me. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, four, back, side, side, turn, turn, circle, circle. You've done that? High five your, your friend to the side and say, good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sit back down. Do that three times. One is to wake up your body. The second one is to break up the, the monotony of what you're doing all day. And the third one is saying, hey, we're going to go to sleep. You see, when you're, when you're sleeping, that's when you're healing. But you don't want to go to sleep like this. You really want to heal. And, and so that's, you want to take the stress out of it so your body's doing it. I'm going to give you, this wasn't part of it, but it's something that I'm also going to tell you. Do not watch the news this before you go to bed. Now we're coming back to this. Because your subconscious doesn't know right from wrong. It just knows. So when you see what's going on with Iraq, when you see what's going on in Israel and stuff, your subconscious doesn't know right from wrong. It wants to solve it. It's about solving things. And so your mind is working on that all night. Read your goals, read something spiritual, do whatever, read something positive. You do not want to go to sleep listening to something that you can't do anything about because your spirit feels like a victim in that, in that form. It will feel like a victim because it can't, you cannot call up Obama and say, you know what, we're not going to drop any more bombs. Or like, oh, let's bring them home. Not going to happen. You don't have that power. So it's going to affect you. You shouldn't be ignorant of what's going on, but that shouldn't be your start, and it shouldn't be the beginning of your day. If if I, if I wake up and I and I say to this lady and I hit her and I go, "Good morning," and she, she's pissed for the rest of the morning and stuff like that. You don't start that way either. So don't put on "Good Morning America." You're full of crap. You don't don't put it on. Don't put it on. Do something that inspires you, and then catch up with the rest of the world, and, and you'll do well. So that's about your posture. Oh, and I said there's another one. So your neck is the first one. The other one is your hamstrings. Your hamstring is, you, you, I always say, and I go, touch the floor, and they go, I've never been able to do that. And everything. You're losing your, your longest muscle, and you're losing it. You're losing your, your, you should be able to touch and stuff. Thank God they didn't split. I was like, concerned. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, what, so, what, so, what happened is that, that, but each and every one of you was able to put your foot in your mouth when you were a little baby. If you could do that right now, I will give you my wallet. <laughs> so, so, oh, she does yoga. I, I, I said, if you, I was looking over here. <laughs> so, but that's the thing. Keep your hamstrings up. One of the, uh, one of the worst things that we're doing, and I need to t uh, do this, there's two parts of your muscles, flexibility and limber, um, flexibility and strength. That's what your muscles do. And so, but... What happens is that you, as we get older, what we're doing in America is we're aging people quicker. The reason why you tell them, oh, you need to work out more. You're losing, you're losing your, uh, your muscle mass. And we do. You do lose a percentage of your muscle mass. You want to keep your tone. You don't want to bring up your strength. See, because everything in your body, you want the toneness, but it's now about flexible. How many of you are saying, as I'm getting older, I'm getting more flexible? <laughs> the, the, those who raise their hand, they have a disease for, <laughs> for talk, but most of them, and they really, sometimes they do, but what's happening is we get tighter as we get older. So it's about you staying limber because the strongest you, and personally you, was between 20 and 36. That is your strongest period. And you said, well, you should see what I'm doing now. It doesn't matter. Your 20, 36-year-old you would have beat, that beat this person any given day. So it's about you staying limber and flexible because, the, because your tendons are the only thing that's always getting tight. And it's getting tighter and tighter. That's why when you hear when someone dies, you straighten them out because they're going like this. They're, they're going back into this form. You're allowed to get tight once in your life, and it's called rigor mortis. And so, and so other than that, you need to stay flexible. You need to do things that will keep you flexible. We're accelerating everyone's, um, we're accelerating 
their disease process, their arthritis, because we're making them do this, which is shortening up that tendon even quicker. So work on your flexibility. My last one is your feet. And your feet is the foundation of everything. It starts from the bottom up. And so we look at you from the bottom up. Terrell will tell you from the bottom up. We look at your feet because we're the only, the only animal, the, the, if, you, if you go down that deep, that's on two feet all the time. That's, that's what we do. But the base of that is the reason why you can't move an elephant, big feet and big, big square footage. We're on just our feet. And then you start taking it down in the swan. It's not your whole foot. Your foot should be about five times bigger than what it is, but you're on the back of where your ankle is. That's where, you're, that's where all your weight is. It's basically on this much. Oh. And so so you, you need to have that. Your, the front part of your foot is about propelling, but the back part is about your, your feet. So you have to work on your feet because if that's off, it doesn't matter. You could have the best house in the world, which is, but if the foundation is cracking and it's falling apart, and as we get older, our foot gets fl- flatter and wider, it's f- your the house is the house is going to collapse. It's the foundation. Your health is falling in. If you, your knee ill first, if you all do this, Wayne, I trust you. <laughs> Touch Don't. my knee. <laughs> Don't. Don't. So what happens is if I'm just doing this with my my foot, I'm just going like this with my foot. He can feel my knee moving. And I'm trying not to. As a dancer, I'm trying not to. But then after that, I'll feel it, it, it'll start here. It'll work its way to the hip. It works to your low back. A lot. I just treated someone um, today, and he was telling me all this stuff, low back, low back. He's an orthopedic surgeon, but he's saying, okay, it's his foot. I adjusted his foot, and he said, that feels better. And he goes, but it's still there, which I was like, does it say God? Does it say God chiropractic on my door? I'm like, the, the guy couldn't do it in a month, and then you give me just before Denise is stressing me out. Are you coming? Are you coming? I was like, I can't just do your foot. And so we got we got him and everything, and and he said, Wow, it felt really good. So we do look at your foot because, and and I, it's a quick test. It's so quick, and if I know you can't do that, I know that part of your problem is that. The the last thing about that is a lot of people say, well, is this the cause? That's one of the causes. It's very rare that you have one thing that's causing it. It's accumulation. Doc will tell you that about your teeth. It's accumulation. You're not brushing at night. You're, you're eating too much acidic things. You're drinking too much soda. It's not one thing. And so, but the, the one thing about it, there's nothing better than natural. There, you can't beat God on that one. You can't beat nature on that one, but it's slow. If I put in an acorn and the next day or within, I'll, I'll even make it the next month, you see a full-grown, you're like, no, nah, there's something wrong with that. It is a slow process, but your synth- synthetic foods, but your synthetic foods and your processed foods doesn't have any nutrition in it. There's the micro and there's the macro. In the macro, it's not happening when you microwave your food, when you get processed food, it's not happening. So that's why you're seeing people getting more acidic. That's why you're seeing people getting the cancer and stuff. It's because they have no energy to break it down. The micro is your enzymes, your probiotics, and things. There's nothing there. So when you get the synthetic, as a matter of fact, the synthetic vitamin C at first will make your body think like, hey, well, that's pretty good. I got a kind of little charge there. Then eventually it starts working against you. The synthetic stuff, your body doesn't even recognize vitamin C, and it doesn't, and you're starting to go down. So don't, put, I mean, it's your health. You don't play around with that part because what happened on this health care, because you all have been available with Obamacare, we really didn't have a, a health crisis. It's really the last, and, and Dr. Wayne, Dr. Jack, and, uh, all, it's the last two years of your life. That's where all the money was going to because you did not check how many, it's very rare that a baby has problems. It, it's very rare. They are very healthy, and there's no money there. There's no, their money's in your geriatric patients. Those are the richest doctors. And Sonia will tell you that. But you will see that over and over again. It's the last two years of your life, because everyone's cashing in on that cow. That cow has the last milk. 
and stuff because you're not going to get any milk and I got to wait for my son another 60 years before he can start doing it. So most of your, it will wipe you out. If you stay in a hospital and you have something bad, in about a month, I don't think any of us could stay and say, do whatever you need to do. It will wipe you out. And the thing is, it's part of it because you get sued, so they're doing it. Part of it is that we're not going to see anything. So, but if I charge six hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollars, yeah, I might not get all of it, but I'll get at least one hundred fifty, two hundred thousand. Not going to your inheritance. They're not going to get a damn thing about that. I'm getting some of that money. That's that last cow. That's that last drip of milk. So you need to take care of your health from the mouth, from your posture, from your foot because it's your gift. It's the, it's the best gift you were ever given. If I said to Dr. Wayne, who's, very, who's also very fam famous, famous. Um, famous, very famous, very famous. <laughs> he, he's also a dentist, he's re, he was retired, and he's done very well and stuff, did good investments and stuff, but he also knows this, is that um, he, if he could wipe, it could wipe out his finances in like this if he doesn't take care of his, of his health. So you need to take care of that because it's just too expensive. You cannot do it without, if you want to stay very well off in just in everything, your health. I say, hey, give me a million dollars or give me your health. He goes, here, I'll give you the million. I, I, I can recreate myself. But your health, it's hard to rally back. It's hard to ride it back. And if it does, it's going to cost you a fortune. It's going to probably bankrupt you. So with that, I, um, I see some people, and we're, we're, we went a little bit, I digressed a little bit, came back, came back, <laughs> digressing again right now. <laughs> so, so, um, I see some of people. Does anyone who worked with me, because I, it's a little weird, I do a lot of weird stuff. And, but the other thing is this. You notice that I made it a joke. I'm always kind of like, this is what you're going to see at my office. This is the real me. And the reason being, health should be fun. When, how many of you go, Oh my gosh, I have an appointment with my, my medical doctor today. Woo! Wow, let's go, let's go. Come on, honey, come on, get the kids. <laughs> it's that happening because it's very depressing. It's very depressing. It's one, that's why I like Dr. Jack's office. It's just, it's happy. I was like, I think Perel started at his office. <laughs> it's, I'm so happy. It's like everybody's happy there. They're all smiling and everything. And that's what he wanted because th most people know this. The, 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 the profession of dentistry is the highest one of uh, suicide because <laughs> because people didn't like to come to them. They get scared. They don't think it's going to be a pleasant experience. And that's what this dog is working on with, with, with his consulting group. That's what Doc is saying. It's about making it fun. So I'm focused. I know where this, this is my calling. This is my purpose. I, I have no... Um, don't ask me to fix your computer. Don't ask me to. Uh, I can't, don't ask me to fix your car. <laughs> Any will tell you I'm like helpless in anything unless it comes to your health. I am just right on board on that one. And so I'm focusing on that. I want you to be aware of it, but I want you to be a focus on where you want to go with your health. You're just going like this. I just want to be healthy. You do not want to focus on your pain, and that's uh, we've gone to places where Sonia has gone to places, and they'll keep on saying this, do you feel that? Because they, and they keep on pressing hard because they want you to feel the pain. The reason why they want you to feel the pain, they want you to focus on pain. But that's like you saying, I want to walk to, to that door, and Delilah is right there, and I said, oh, I'm going to walk right toward Delilah, and I'm going like this. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit somebody. And that's like driving like this. You're going to crash. Focus on that. Be aware of it. And then we'll, we'll get it. Real quick, we're going to just do this really quick. All you do, mo most of the things you do with your hand is this. And so, yep. Sorry. Yep. So when you have a little baby, what's the first thing? They all oh, say, look, get my key out of here. <laughs> <laughs> look, they're grabbing your hand. So everything you've done with your hand has always been like this. And so from grabbing the cup, holding the steering wheel, working the computer, how many times do you do this? And so what you're doing is doing this, and then you can never, you're like, why is my arms bent? So what I want you to do is everyone put their hand out straight like this, bring this hand in the middle of this one, and that's, you're going to put it as close to the, 
the fingernails as you can and go like this. Do that 40 times a, 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 a day, 40, 40 times twice a day. I promise you, you won't have copper tone syndrome. That's a, I made a promise to you. But see, uh, uh, Sandy, so Sandy's going like this. Oh, she, she, was, she was so into the Supreme, she was like, stop. And now she's like, maybe. <laughs> so, so what you're doing, so what you're doing is trying to do that, use, and you have to build up to it. And as the, Dr. Jack and I said, we want it's the quality of your life. It is the quality is that, and the quantity. We want you to have a long life, but you want because it's not who, who's going to take on the burden of or do, who you're going to leave that burden to. Someone that I, I um, Susie will tell you that that they're there. 10 years and they're in 103 and 20 years they've been in Alzheimer's. One of our dear friends in our, in our group that said, he says, I was just glad she went away. He says, we, we have no inheritance. We used it all to keep her alive. My father would have want that. But she stayed, oh, she stayed around, I said 20, she stayed around for 15 years with Alzheimer's. It's, it, you take care. My, our job, um, my, my purpose is your, your, that I, Keep you healthy. That I'm. I'm. That's why I was here on on not to cover Magic Johnson. It was. It was to keep <laughs> yeah, you healthy. Yeah, you're not tall enough. Yeah. To cover <laughs> so it was. To, it was to keep you healthy, so that you could go out there and share what your purpose was, and to keep and do your, and leave your gift with this world. And so that's what we're all about. Absolutely. And and so please go out there. Come see us if you if you, it's a good fit, and go out there and have a beautiful life. And if you have a kid who's got to go to dental school, get one of those yellow bands for him. <laughs> Keep it with Jay. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thanks a lot, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, buddy.